That brings me to the uh, Peter Gabriel. And, yeah. And how did you get hooked up with him? Well, that was through Bob Ezrin again, you know. Right. Uh, I guess Peter kind of asked Bob, or I don't know how it worked out, but to, to sort of put, the, to put together a band. Okay. You know? <laughs> and uh, Peter didn't want Robert Fripp, which was, we were all cool with that. You know, Robert Fripp was going to go over and do it. But uh, <laughs> by that time, Bob had known, uh, had worked with Tony Levin, <coughs> excuse me, and Albert Schwartz, uh, Alan Schwartzberg and uh, Larry Fast and Jimmy Malin. So these guys were all in the band. Great. And then I came along because I worked so much with Bob. And uh, it was really great because I didn't know anybody in the room. <laughs> so uh, it was kind of cool for me in a way, you know, that I, I always liked that. I always liked going to the studio with players I'd never met and oh, just yeah. start zero and see what happens. Uh, so I immediately fell in love with these guys because they were superb players. Tony Levin, especially, he's still a friend of mine, and we still do stuff together. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, and there was a guy named Joey Chirovsky who was playing keyboards, a great keyboard player from Canada. So it was this great big band. It was like eight people, something like that, <clears throat> on the basic track. So it was basically like playing the album live, uh, which was fabulous. I mean, because... When you, when you went into the studio, to, when you went into the control room to hear the thing playback, it was like, well, it's almost done. You know, <laughs> there were overdubs done, of course, and solos and things and things like that. But and orchestras, there was a couple of songs that had orchestra on it. <clears throat> but Peter was, uh, I I didn't I didn't really know him that well. I I, I wasn't a big Genesis fan. Oh yeah, point. yeah. It was kind of prog rock, and I wasn't really into prog rock. At all. I was into Cream, you know, and Jimmy. Yeah, Hendrick. sure. And uh, <clears throat> but when I heard the first song, and I don't remember which one it was, I just remember the first song I heard. I thought, "Oh my God, this guy's this guy's amazing." Yeah. And each song got better and better and better and better, and then Salisbury Hill comes along, and I'm thinking, "Well, this guy's a genius." I met another genius, so I'm work with Lou Reed. <coughs> He's a genius. Alice is a genius as a showman and as a oh, lyricist, sure. singer. And then Peter. And of course, Jack. Jack, Jack Bruce is beyond the pale, you know. Uh, so I, I started feeling this thing like, oh my God, so all these people I'm working with are, are bloody genius. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and sometimes you feel like, well, what the hell am I here for? You know what I mean? But <coughs> It didn't take long for me to feel like I, when you hear the songs, you just want to do them as best you can because you have a lot of respect for the artist and you have a lot of respect for the music. So <clears throat> there was real joy in doing that album. I haven't done that many albums where I didn't feel the same joy doing them. And I'm not going to name the ones I did. <laughs> Get me in trouble. <laughs> So the, how did the, uh, well, of course, the whole album's great, but, you know, everybody always talked about Salisbury Hill. Now, yeah. I know that you know, a, lot of, a lot of the people had to, a lot of the guys on the record had had to leave before yeah. that was even recorded, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Well, Fripp had to leave. Uh, he left about two days before we did we actually recorded Salisbury because he had sessions lined up in, in London. Oh, okay. So he had to get back and go to work. And then the New York guys, which were Tony and Jimmy Malin and Alan Schwartzberg and Larry Fast, all had to go back to New York the next day. <laughs> so we only had one night to record Salisbury Hill. But as it turned out, it, it only took that one evening to record the song. It's one of those songs that's so brilliantly written that it really doesn't take much to get a, a good take because the song is so good. And it's in, it's in an odd time. It's in seven, four. Right. Uh, which I thought was scared me at first because I hadn't played it any real odd times, but well, with Jack Bruce, we played some odd little bits, but we never played a whole song in a, right. in a seven, four. I did. So I was a little scared. And I, and the first, 
first pass, I, I was very concentrating on counting to make sure I did it right. But then it didn't take long for me to realize that, you know, this thing is so bloody well written that all I have to do is just play the song and it all works itself out. So I, the, the second and third take, I didn't, ha I didn't have to count at all. I just played. It was, it's, it's one of those songs, you know. Just felt it. Yeah. You just feel it. You just go with the flow of the song. No, I I'd heard that 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 wasn't even your guitar that you played on that, right? No, I didn't have <laughs> I didn't have an acoustic guitar at the time. So there was this really wonderful second engineer named Jim Frank. He was a good friend of mine. He he helped teach me a lot about recording. Very smart guy, very cool guy, really funny. He had a a beautiful old Martin. I think it was a D twenty eight. Oh, okay, and. Uh, so I used his guitar. <laughs> that's because I didn't have one. So I used his guitar. So that's his guitar on Salisbury Hill. And all that that uh, that song is uh, that's capo to what what it the seventh fret? No, I'm second fret. Second fret. Oh, that's yeah. right. It's in B. It's in B. Yeah, that's uh, right. But we played it in sort of the A position. Yeah. Okay. So it's on the second fret. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 